welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to those who have subscribed. Let's push this channel. If you're new here, do the right thing and subscribe. Um, let's get this channel to 1,000 subscribers, okay? In this video, I'm going to be showing you my interview um, for um, Teach Taiwan. I'm going to show you the answer that I gave, the, que the questions I was asked, and um, be able to show you how I responded to the interview questions. Um, and please don't copy my answers. Uh, just This is just to give you an idea of how to answer questions. Um, and it's not that I'm perfect in answering questions, but they got me the job. So, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, let's get straight into that video. Asking questions from the questioner, I will be answering me to the best of our abilities. And this part will be sent to the schools, and the schools will be the ones to decide whether to hire or not. Okay. So, they'll be looking at this part of the interview, add your resume, and make a decision off that. Okay. So, are you okay with me recording for this part? Yes, I'm okay. Okay, and do you need a minute to get ready before we get started? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, so then, let's get started. How would you describe a personality in three words? Um, I would say that I'm an assertive person and I'm very talkative. Uh, and the last thing is that I'm very adaptable. Please tell us three characteristics you think a good language teacher should have. I think a good language teacher needs to be patient with the students because sometimes uh, we, you have learners that have never heard of English before, so patience is very important. Uh, and the next thing is flexibility. Um, when you plan your lesson, you can plan it according to the way you see fit, but you can always see changes in the classroom, so you need to be flexible uh, to make changes if anything comes up. And lastly, you need to uh, be fun and entertaining uh, so that the lesson is engaging and fun for the kids. Why did you decide to become a teacher? Um, I decided to become a teacher after I went to China and then I taught uh, English in China and then I've fallen in love with the profession of teaching. I found my passion. I always knew that I was a talkative person, but I did not know that I could actually teach. So when I was in China, I actually developed a love for teaching. So I came back home and then I studied um, a postgraduate certificate in education so that I'm more qualified to teach. Why do you want to teach in Taiwan? Um, Taiwan is a, a country that is full of culture and history um, and I heard that it's the second safest country in the world and that's very important for me um, because I'm, I'm, I feel safe when I'm in a place that I know that there's safety so when I heard this I knew that this is a place that I would definitely fit in and be comfortable at. What else do you think you can provide to the school other than teaching English to the students? Um, so currently I'm working for an NGO, so it's like a charity. So I teach young girls um, how to play soccer. So this is a, a, um, a skill that I can bring to the school to teach soccer or facilitate any clubs or extracurricular activities that need to be done, whether it's soccer and or netball. I've also played netball when I was in high school. Um, so these are the things that I can offer the school. How do you usually motivate your students? Um, I think the most important thing that works for me uh, to motivate my students is to incorporate fun activities. So such as Simon says, the telephone and charades, um, it motivates them to participate and to feel relaxed in a classroom. And another thing that I use to motivate my students is to set goals. Um, when we set goals of what we want to achieve with learning English, when they see their progress, that motivates them to continue learning. And I also use a rewarding system when students participate and engage in class. I give them badges and certificates and leaderboards that I keep in the classroom just to help them to keep going in the classroom. What are some methods you use to 
check for understanding you as you're teaching? Um, so I the method that I use is concept check questions. So if I uh, give st uh, students uh, and a task, I will concept check. I'll give them demonstration and explain what the task requires, um, and then I'll concept check and check if they understand the task. And once they do the task, I will monitor to check if they're doing the task correctly, um, or I will ask them. Um, uh, questions to make sure that they understand what is required of them. How do you connect your lessons to the real world? Um, usually I make sure that I keep myself um, intact with what's going on around the world. Um, for example, when there is, um, when we experience COVID-19, um, I would incorporate that in my lessons uh, when I'm teaching safety science, for example, to kids. And then I would incorporate such examples like like right now we are experiencing COVID-19. What are the things that we can do to be safe, for example? So I always make sure that I read the news and check what is happening locally so that I can incorporate that into my lesson. with mixed level of students what will you do for students who are in lower level and not in higher level um i think teaching a class with different levels starts with planning so when i plan i first consider the different learning styles that uh, students have some students have visual uh, type of learning some have kinesthetic learning and some have auditory learning so when i plan my lessons i make sure that i incorporate learning materials that would cater for those learners because they are all different and then when it comes to doing activities in classroom i mix um, high level students with low level students in the same group so that the high level students can help the low level students so that we can bridge that gap um, that it's not uh, some some students are good and some students are bad. So when you have high level students and low level students together, they can help one another and do peer check also in the classroom. If you have 30 students in your class, how do you give all the students a chance to listen and speak in English? Um, so what I do is use drills where I model the content that I'm teaching and allow the students to drill uh, after that content and then in terms of activities I make sure that we do activities such as role play um, where every student will have a chance to speak and listen to the other students what will you do if the students are disrupted in your class um, so I think this goes back to setting rules in the classroom um, I make sure that before I do anything with the classroom, we start, we set up rules. Um, so usually what I do, I use, um, I grab their attention by using quiet lines. So I would have a quiet line and raise it up so that they know that um, we need to be quiet um, and focus on the work that we're doing. What will you do for students with disabilities in our class? Um, I think um, inclusivity is very important to me as a teacher. I believe that every student that is in the class needs to feel included. Um, so firstly, I make sure that all the students, they respect one another and make sure that they don't treat the students with disability any different. Um, but at the same time with me, if that student maybe is struggling, I will ensure that I give them one-on-one -on -one attention to make sure that they are on the same level as the rest of the class. What do you think is the most interesting activity you have done with your students? Um, the most interesting activity that I've done with my students is the one of building towers. Um, so I task students by building towers where they have to work together to create a tallest tower and they use sticks to make sure that um, this tower stands and it's sturdy. Uh, this activity is very much interesting because it gets students talking and it helps them to learn communication skills um, as they are doing the activity and working together in developing that teamwork spirit. What do you think is the biggest change in 
your teaching experience when looking back to the first class you taught? Um, I, the first class I taught, I was very nervous <laughs> and I didn't have as much uh, content knowledge, I would say. Um, and since then, I've improved and uh, studied to make sure that I have really good content knowledge that when I teach English, I know everything that I need to be teaching. Um, so I think I was nervous and less confident because I, I, I wasn't so good at the content. But now I've come such a long way and I think I'm really good at it now. Alright, last question. If you had to pick one area in your teaching method that you could still improve, what would that be? Um, I think what I always do, I use the same old activities that are still fun uh, and engaging to the students. But I think one thing that I would love to improve is to just be more innovative when it comes to games. Um, so find out more games that are engaging and fun for the students that are not the norm, that are not the usual games. So I'm working on that to try and find games that are uh, unique and still fun for the kids or relatable to them in terms of their culture. Right, so then that is all for the questionnaire. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Um, yes.